Okay. So good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Finding Books, part of an ongoing series in the Skill Builder workshops that will happen throughout the semester. In today's session, you're going to learn about how to locate and retrieve both physical and electronic books using McCain's Grab and Go service, Interlibrary Loan, and Electronic Reserves. Um, and everybody's consented to being recorded, so that's good. And I've shared that link. Okay, so any questions before we get started? Great, okay. I am gonna go ahead and share my screen. And as you all have probably learned, to get to WorldCat, there's basically from the library homepage, there's the cat, oh, and I should say my name is Christopher Bishop and I am a librarian here at Agnes. I probably did not introduce myself, sorry. Um, when you're here, there's the catalog link to WorldCat here, and then there's the find books here. My preference is just to go to catalog WorldCat, so we'll click in there. Okay, and again, you're probably familiar with this, but the catalog is going to search materials from around the world. So it'll search materials within McCain Library, but also items held by other libraries, both in the US um, and other countries. Um, there also be electronic materials that may be like government documents. There's going to be some periodical articles from like journals or magazines. But for the most part, the reason you want to use WorldCat is to find books. That's really the emphasis with WorldCat and mostly is what we're going to talk about today. So first thing I want to do when I come in is I always want to sign in because once you sign in, then we can use interlibrary loan, which we're going to talk about today. Um, you'll be able to look at what you've requested. So this is what you want to do first. So I'm going to go to sign in. Go over here. And then once I'm signed in, you'll see your name up here. Okay, then when we're searching, I don't like using this single search box. Now, if I knew if it was a, a book or a specific author, then I would probably use this. But if I'm use, doing any more complex of a search, then really it's best for me to go to advanced search. And does, do either of you have something right now that you're researching? If not, I've got a search I'll do, but if somebody has something, I can do that too. No? Um, I'm reading about Dalai Lama right now. Okay, anything in particular? Um, how he was chosen. Okay, let's do... <laughs> now I've got to remember if I can, let me, let me I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check my, uh, yes, okay, I would have spelled that correctly. Dolly Lama. That's correct, right? I'm recording this and I'm like, is that correct? Okay, so Dalai Lama. Um, here I could change this to, ooh, how about this? Let's do, okay, we're gonna start with Dalai Lama. Here I could limit this to maybe um, spirituality or um, dealings with China or something like that. I guess we'll just start out broad here. So I'll do Dalai Lama. And once you're in, you're gonna see all kinds of different materials in here. So what I wanna show you is kind of two different ways to do this. So let's say, you're doing this and you need things that are readily available. You don't wanna use interlibrary loan because you need these items in the next two days. The first thing you can do is over here on the left, see where it says Agnes Scott College McCain Library? I could click there and if I do that, it will limit everything I find to things that we own either electronically, like with eBooks or physically. So it's nice here, as you can see, okay, this is uh, the Dalai Lama's little book of Buddhism. Let's click into it. And then from there, I can click on view description. And it gives me the subject headings. It gives me a summary. And it tells me that Agnes owns it. So in this case, when you see a book and it says view ebook, and sometimes you'll see one link. Sometimes we may have the ebook through three or four different places. 
if you click on view ebook here, it will take you into the portal, what, portal where this book is located. And then from here, when I see this EBSCO link like this, where it says PDF full text, I can just click on that. And then I can go here and it is the ebook. It is the contents of that entire book. What's also nice with this is over on the left, I get contents, which would be my table of contents for an introduction. These are broken down. I can also search within. So Esther, what was it you were looking at? Was it, what did you say childhood? Yes, how he was chosen. Okay, so let's look at, let's try, let's do childhood. I have not done this search before, so hopefully, but let's see. Or maybe reincarnation. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, let's do reincarnation. That's not good. Spell it right. All right, reincarnation. And then what it'll do is it'll look through, oh, and look at there. Uh, Jews, always described themselves as a simple Buddhist. Uh, he was recognized at the age of two as reincarnation of the 13th Dalai Lama. Um, in Yasto. So if you do that, you can search within and it'll find those for you too. And then I'm just going to close this out to go back to my searches. So as you'll see, you get a lot of eBooks. This is a journal article. If I click here, it will take me to the article and I can look at it. But like I said, this is really more for books. You'll see ebook, ebook. So you'll see there's a lot of ebooks here. And then I wanted to show you, okay, so for example, let's say the Dalai Lama on Tantra. And I go in. And again, always want to look at this view description because see this table of contents? Super helpful. The subject heading, super helpful too. I can click on these and do searches based on those also. But this is a book that we own in print. Now, if you are local and you can come by and pick up the book, which some students have done that, I can click on place hold here. And I will go in and fill in this information and then the request will come to us. We'll go and pull the book and then you'll get an email saying you can come and pick it up whenever the library is open. But that's, that's really only if you have the ability to come by and pick it up in the library. Otherwise though, what you could do is, again, looking at this. So let's say I was looking at this and I, I knew that the Dalai Lama I was looking at was the 13th Dalai Lama. And so I wanted this chapter. What I could do is I could copy this. And then if you come down here, do you see where it says to request electronic access to print books, please email. What I could do then is send this address, which is in the library, send an email and say, hey, I need this chapter from this book can you send it to me? And what we'll do then is if you just want the one chapter, we'll just, we'll just scan that chapter and send it to you and you don't need to return or anything. On the other hand, if you wanted to look at this entire book, you would email, we would scan it for you and then we'll check, we'll basically check it out to you so that at the end of the semester, we basically would, we'd, we'd lend it to you through a Google drive. And at the end of the semester, we would pull your access. The reason we're doing that is called controlled digital lending. Technically, because of copyright, to copy a whole book and send you a copy electronically, that's a copyright no, no, you can get in trouble for doing that. However, if I check out the book to you and make an electronic copy and then lend it to you through a Google Drive so only you can read it, and then I retract it at the end of the semester, I'm still falling within copyright. So when you're looking at these, eBooks are always great. You just open it up, you look at it, the whole thing's there. But what I wanna make sure that you know too is that if it's a physical book and we own it, you just go in, you email, tell us which part of the book you want, we'll send it to you accordingly, and then you can have that either we'll give you a chapter, which you can just keep, I can, that's fair to, copy a chapter and give it to someone according to copyright. Or if it, again, it's a whole book, 
then we'll just send you the whole book as scanned and then we'll retract that at the end of the semester. So those are the ways that you're going to find things that we own and how you would access those. Any questions about that? How long would scanning the whole book usually take? If you requested that book, okay, so let's say we got done and you come in and you do some searches and you asked for the whole book at two o'clock. You definitely would get it by Sunday. You may get it today. I would say a day, a day at the most. It may only be a couple hours. It basically depends on how many other requests are being made and, and also how long the book is. If it's a shorter book or let's say it's a smaller book and the person can scan two pages at a time, it shouldn't take very long. If it's a really long book or you've got to scan one page at a time, it'll take a bit longer. But I would say normally give it about a day but it could be less it should i can't think of a time where it would ever take more than a day though does that sound acceptable that's great yeah and also and we're going to talk about interlibrary loan in a moment if you need something do not worry about requesting too much information uh stephanie that does interlibrary loan is not going to mind how many requests you make i when i'm working like right now i'm working with the um the international relations and the history senior seminar, I definitely push those students because of the kind of research that they're doing to really use interlibrary loan to use this controlled digital lending for the things that we own. So don't ever feel like, oh, I don't want to put somebody out or also don't feel like, well, if they scan this, I may only use a part of it or I'm not sure that I need that. Don't worry about that either. Part of research, part of being a college student is looking at things and sometimes not using those, you know, basically having to look at it and then say, you know what, this isn't really exactly what I wanted. And normally you would be able to physically come in the library, you could flip through things and, you know, you just wouldn't check it out. You don't have that option now. So don't ever let that serve as a hindrance. So this is just searching in our library. But what you can also do is in the default searches, libraries worldwide. So when you do that, it's checking our library and it's checking other libraries. You want to do this if you have a little more time. So Esther, if your paper was due, you know, if your paper was due Monday, I would tell you to do that. If your paper's due in a week or more, I would tell you to leave it libraries worldwide. So once you're in here, you can see, I don't see as many things that are just owned by Agnes. And the reason is it's looking at, now obviously this is a pretty broad keyword. All I put in was Dalai Lama. I could much more narrow this. But because of that, it's ranking things according to what it thinks the best results are. So you'll, you will see things you know that we own, but you're gonna see a number of things we don't. So if you were, let's say you were looking at, let's say your professor said, okay, when you're talking about the Dalai Lama, I'd like you to use some of the Dalai Lama's own writings, basically as a primary source. And so you, you go in and you look and you're like, oh, wait a minute, number two, this says essential writings. I can treat them as a primary source. Click on this and you'll click on view description. Now in this case, this one does not have a table of contents like we saw before, which is always hugely um, helpful. In this case, what you would wanna do is, I'm gonna have to request this through interlibrary loan. Now here's the thing, if we own the book, I can scan the whole thing and check it out to you. If we're borrowing it from another library, technically we do not own that. And so I can't do that for you. So I would need to know the chapters from that book, unless again, if you can come into the library and pick the book up through interlibrary loan, then certainly we'll give you the book and you can, you can have it for at least a month or you can renew it and keep it longer. If you can't do that and you still want it from another library because we don't own it. In this case, what I would do is I would go in to request items from other libraries and I would put in, I would leave this book media. And then what I would put here is, can you send, I basically I would type in, can you send me the table of contents or the index at the back of the book? Put this information in. Stephanie will do that and then she'll email you that table of contents. Then um, Esther, if you were interested in some of these writings, you would say, okay, 
Um, in chapter three on pages 45 through 55, um, he talks about his childhood and how he was chosen. Oh, that's perfect. That's what I want. Then you would go back in, you would put another interlibrary loan request in and basically here you would say, I want chapter three pages 45 through 55. And then Stephanie would order those for, for you and then send it back to you. Does that make sense? Any confusion there? Yes, this is awesome. <laughs> um, let me show, I'm, but normally you're gonna see a table of contents. <laughs> it just happens to be the ones I'm clicking on. Do not, but normally what you would, yeah, you would be able to do is say, okay, <laughs> a baby found in the wilderness, maybe that's applicable. Um, you would be able to locate the chapters that you want and then you would be able to put them into that request. And I don't want you to um, be dissuaded though. If you see a whole book, let, so let's say you found this book and you said, you know what, the library doesn't own this book, but I really need, I really need this whole book. Put that in the request and just say, um, I need the whole book. And basically what Stephanie will do, and I know this is gonna sound odd, she'll, order different chapters from different libraries so that you're not violating copyright. It's probably honestly really a copyright violation, but it's a way of getting around it by taking the chapters from different copies of the book. And that probably sounds odd. Like, well, if you're gonna do it anyways, why don't you just get it from one? But that's, it, it's a way to get around it. So it, again, if you, de if you de do need more than a chapter or two, still, still do so. But if you can find, if you can locate more specific sections, it's, it's gonna be a little easier and more expedient. Um, let's see, what else did I wanna talk about? I guess as far as these searches, I do, I'm gonna show you a little bit of a different search just to make sure, and this is something Casey probably already spoke about, so hopefully I'm not being too redundant. Um, a couple things over here. When you're in here and you're looking for these materials and whether we own it or um, others own it, I definitely would say use these um, publication years. In this case, um, Dalai Lama, probably not so much, but let's say I was writing about relations between um, China and Tibet and I wanted things that dealt with foreign relations during the Trump administration. I definitely want to limit that search to the last five years because Trump was not president previous 2016. Therefore, if I happen to get results and I'm focusing in on um, Chinese US relations, dealing with Tibet, I don't want things that are previous to five years. So if, it's, if your search at all needs to be time sensitive, definitely use these, very helpful. Over here, I've got where I can limit it to books, articles, chapters. If it was me, I would probably just go ahead and limit it to books. I wouldn't limit it to eBooks because you know you all have the option right now of ordering things to interlibrary loan or asking for a section of the book that we own. But if you're running out of time or you just feel like it's just easier to use, you could certainly limit this to eBooks. Um, articles and chapters really it's best to use the academic article databases for articles and chapters. Some will come up. You might find something interesting, but I probably wouldn't. And then you'll see these other ones you probably wouldn't use at this point. And then down here, you're going to see fiction, nonfiction. If you start getting results and you're like, well, these are all fiction books talking about this, definitely then type, uh, choose nonfiction because you will get that. Or if you just want a biography definitely choose that. And then the other thing, if you're finding that results are coming up in a language that you're not comfortable um, reading in, then definitely you could choose here. I mean, you can see when, based on Dalai Lama, there's 1300 books in Tibetan. There's over a thousand in French. The majority of these are in English, but you can see here you have multiple languages, which is also helpful if you're taking I don't know, if you were taking a French class and you were doing advanced research and you had to do so in French, you can see where searching using this language limiter would be pretty helpful. The other thing I wanted to show um, in advanced search, I originally was gonna do a search if no one had something that they were looking for. 
I was going to do um, propaganda. And then I'm going to change this to keyword. And I'm going to use, in this case, I want to look at film or cinema or a movie. So I'm going to put this in as a keyword. So some authors may use the term film, some may use cinema, and some may use movie or movies, the asterisk, so I get the plural. And then down here, I'm going to limit it some more because that's still pretty broad. I'm going to limit it to, what did I say? Um, World War II. I'm going to put those. I'm going to change the keyword. Um, over here, you notice I put the ors here. You don't want to use, see the ors you have over here under the operator? You don't want to use these. It throws the search off. I, I wish it wouldn't even put it there because it never works. You want to put those terms here. But basically, when I'm searching, it's going to say film. Okay, I can't find film, but, I, but the search does find the word cinema. Oh, I don't find the word cinema, but it does find the word movie. I don't think there's an alternate spelling for Dalai Lama, but if there was an alternate spelling or if there's a different term used in Tibet or in China, then I would probably, and have you come across that, Esther, any alternate term for the term no, Dalai Lama? I'm not so sure. Yeah, if you do, you might want to use that. It's also really good if you have different spellings. Um, maybe if the word has been um, anglicized in some way, so different spellings, different terms, something like that. But if I do this and do search, I'm going to get more results than if I just said film. Because I thought, oh, well, films. You see, it's not a lot, but I get fewer. So it can be helpful doing that. And then based on this search too, you see in this field, you know, in the, with the Dalai Lama, a lot of things that came up initially were things that we don't own. However, you can see here doing this right away, some things that we own comes to the top, but then you'll see some others. If you want a video or something like that, you can always ask. I mean, it's possible that it is something we may be able to find and share with you electronically. It's a little harder because normally it would probably be something we would get on DVD and then we would check it out to you and you could watch it, you know, in your dorm room or at home. And if you didn't have um, a DVD player, we would check a DVD player out to you, but that's not, <laughs> that's not going to happen right now. Um, and the other thing I wanted to show you, does anyone have any questions about finding those materials? It's a lot more options than what we had previously. In the old catalog, um, you had to search WorldCat separately and the eBooks didn't come up in it and it wasn't nearly as helpful. Now, everything's in that one catalog, so it's super helpful. And the other thing I wanted to show you, I don't know, have you all seen this guide? Does this look familiar? No? No. What? Well, if you go here, libguys.agnescott.edu forward slash worldcat, this has a number of, um, Casey and I have made videos and then there's also to, like short tutorials in here. And it will tell you like how to place a hold. We talked about placing a hold for things that we own. Uh, it talks about uh, how can I access an item that is not available in McCain? So that would be interlibrary loan. Um, how to access course materials. So as you're looking based on you um, joining in these, giving you kind of an overview, these will be nice short tutorials. Again, sometimes in some of these, there's a video and it'll go in and it'll tell you exactly how to do these things. Because obviously there's no expectation that you're going to remember every little detail that we've gone through. And I think, because we just reviewed this today, for the most part, I think we've got everything covered in here. And certainly if something, if you feel like something's still not answered, you can certainly reach out and ask. But this guide is, should be super helpful to um, just kind of, you know, getting to what you need. 
any questions or anything that you're wondering about that I didn't cover as far as finding these materials? Um, if I find like a CD or something um, in the world library, um, is it possible to make a copy or just? Yeah, okay, so with books, we can, with books, we can scan it and send it to you. With music, you can't do that. However, what we could do, hmm. we've also talked about mailing things to students, but the only problem with that is with everything going on, it gets very costly. Um, are you, you're not local, Esther? I, I'm in New Jersey. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's not gonna work. Um, God, I, I hate to just tell you no. I think it would depend. I think, we, you know what, if, if you find that that's, you do have a need, then definitely email and we can look at alternatives. So like I see some libraries in New York or um, New Jersey they have it available. Mm -hmm. Like, is there a way to go there and borrow it under the name of Agnes Scott or something? Um, okay, so normally, if you were in Georgia, I could give you an interlibrary use card, and then you can go to other college university libraries, and you'd be able to check out things. Mm. I would say do this. If you find that to be the case, and you feel like you could actually go to that school, email email me because I'm the I'm the access services librarian. So email me and say, hey, I would like to go and get this. What I'll do for you is I would then contact that library for you and just say, hey, this is a student. The student is enrolled at Agnes Scott. I can verify that the you know students in good standing. And we see that you have this. Would you be willing if I effectively vouch for the student would you be willing to create that an account for that student and let them check it out? They may say yes and they may say no. If it's in Georgia, I would I can tell you they would say yes because we have those agreements. In another state, they may or they may not. Okay. But I okay. think if you contact them, to be honest with you, they're gonna be like, well, I don't, what, who are you? <laughs> if I contact them as another academic library, they may be willing to because I would basically be vouching for you. Okay, so it's worth a try. Oh yeah, definitely. And again, if you were local, like Emory has an amazing um, music library. If you were here, I would give you a card and you could go to their music and media library and you would check it out and you know. But yeah, definitely, uh, I can, yeah. Just if you, if you do need to do that, let me know. And then I can uh, look and you can also, when you are, let me see, when you're in here, see where it says search location I believe if you, you can do this in the public one, I believe you can do it in this version too, let me see. If you put in, if you put in your address here and then hit search, it should find libraries that own the item in your local area. Do you see how it's, it's picking up on all these libraries? It, it goes like closest, mm -hmm. like Columbia Theological Library is like two miles from here. And then Georgia Tech, I don't know, this can't be more than 10 miles. And then you see how it moves out and then it goes out to Cobb County, out okay. to Marietta. If you put your address in there, it'll tell you which libraries are closest. And so when you email me, if you wanna do that, just tell me, you can do a screenshot if you want, or you can just tell me which libraries it said it had. Okay. Does that sound good? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, well, if you all need anything, obviously, let us know. If there's anything here that doesn't work for you, because um, hopefully you'll try it out in the next couple of days, then definitely email and we'll help you troubleshoot because, yeah, it can be a little confusing. What's nice is that there's multiple ways to get this material, but it also can be a little, at first, it can be a little annoying because you're like, well, did he say to go in there? Or did he say to go over there? So if that's not, once you do it a couple of times, you'll, you'll be good to go. But at first it, it may be a little confusing. Okay, well, if you guys don't have any questions, um, I think we're good. And you guys submitted Thank this one. Thank you so much. You're welcome. See you later. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye.